Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here. Time for another Patreon sponsored Blind Reaction. And this one comes to you courtesy of Lasse Scani Jorgensen, who has requested that I react to Digimon Adventure Review by Billiam. Now, I don't know Billiam, and I don't really know Digimon either, so this could be kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never got into Digimon, which I think I've said a few times now, because we've had Digimon content before. But, uh... Yeah, hopefully this video will still be entertaining. It's a review. Hopefully it's still a fun one, even though I don't really know the subject matter. Though, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start it and find out. Here we go. Disclaimer, fair use, all that good stuff. Billium. Got At a that time where Digimon music. popularity blossomed. Digimon rode on its success. Yeah. I am not saying that Digimon is a ripoff of Pokemon, but it's brief. I sure thought so at the time, which is possible. why I kind of ignored it. Besides the name, the two don't actually share a lot in common. Digimon's origins actually come from Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi were little handheld digital packages yeah. which caught on with younger audiences. But Digimon was directly marketed to boys. The comic book boom had just reached Japan, and that overly masculine art style influenced Digimon style. The Digimon Adventure anime was able to appeal to a wider audience by inventing heartfelt characters to inhabit this crazy world. Behind the chest pumping, vein popping, bullets and muscles! It's a story about kids, their relationships, and growing up. Digimon tells the story of seven kids. By the way, my name's Ty. This is Sora. She's okay for a wow. girl. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Matt's too cool. Just look at that haircut. And this little kid is Izzy. He should have gone to computer camp. That's um, Mimi. I'll bet you can like guess her favorite color on the first try. TK is Matt's dopey little brother. Oh, and this is Joe. <gasps> but don't ever scare him. He'd probably wet his pants. Amongst a series of strange weather <laughs> events, it starts to snow in the middle of their summer camp. Suddenly, each kid receives a Digivice from the sky, and they're transported to the digital world. There, they meet Digimon. What are they? We're... Digimon! Digital Monsters! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Digimon are partnered specifically to one of the kids. In order to protect them, they transform into bigger Digimon to fight even bigger Digimon. This process is called Digivolving. The Digimon huh? can move back and forth between forms, but usually they stay in their rookie stage. Ty's partner, the Agumon, Izzy Tentamon, Mimi Palmon, Matt Gabumon, Sora Biomon, Joe Gomamon, and TK Patamon. I don't think I'm going to remember Digimon's that. Digimon's name ends in Mon. Yeah. There is no canon explanation for this, but my favorite theory is that it's a file extension. Dot Mon. The Digimon all have fun personalities, uh -huh. but besides their relationships to the partner, Makes the sense. story doesn't belong to them. My favorite one is Gomamon. Joe is so cautious, and Gomamon is such a silly character, they complement each other so perfectly. Yay, we get to swim! Gomamon, you better wait and make sure it's safe first! Plus, Gomamon eventually turns into this walrus oh. viking Thor turtle. <laughs> okay. In the first few episodes, the kids are just surviving and searching for a way to go home. The Digimon act as guide through this crazy world. They find disconnected telephones, a trolley in the middle of the lake, and hollowed out trees with intangible walls. When one of the kids gets into danger, their partner will digivolve into a higher level in order to protect them. The variation of larger Digimon oh. is fun with no two ever looking alike. They run into a giant squishy guy, a snowman, a wild guy, rhinos, this gross yellow guy and a mouse, and both of them take a liking to Mimi. And then there's the Numamon. Slugs who literally throw pink shit at people. Okay, Digimon that's kind of weird. Straight up jerks, and others are just good guys who have been affected by a black gear, a sort of computer virus that causes violent behavior. The grounding factor in this world comes with the characters, who each play a different role amongst the group. Izzy's curiosity helps them learn more about the digital world. Sora is a selfless supporter. Ty becomes the de facto leader. Joe is the group conscious. Matt looks out for everyone's feelings. TK, being the youngest and Matt's younger brother, is a source of worry and joy. And Mimi, sweet, lovable Mimi, her role is being blunt, but she's kind of a brat. I can't take it anymore. I haven't had anything to eat, and my feet are killing me. And but they let you know okay. pretty early on that she's just as valuable as everyone else on the team. Eventually, the group finds shelter in a mansion. They re-energize with food and showers, getting naked, and then we're introduced to Devimon, the evil Digimon who has control over the Black Gears. Devimon separates the kids because he knows that together they can defeat him. But slowly, the kids start to find each other again. Ty finds Matt, who's worried about TK, and his frustration leads to a fist fight. Matt oh. breaks down and tells Ty that his overprotectiveness of TK is him compensating for the fact that he's never around. 
TK and Matt's parents are divorced, and they have split custody, so they never see each other. Okay. A lot of the kids have at-home issues that are slowly addressed over the course of the series. Some issues end up getting resolved, but others just have to learn to live with them. There's a scene later in the series where their whole family is together. TK is so ecstatic, but you can just feel the tension between Matt and his mom. One episode features Izzy and Mimi together. Izzy discovers that he can log on to the Digital Worlds database from his computer, but Mimi gets irritated at him and runs away. The interaction between these two are priceless, and you get to hear their Digimon try to pitch their side. Oh, don't cry, Mimi! Oh no, not you too! Izzy, do something! Do what? My laptop can't do everything! Meanwhile, TK and Patamon discover the primary village, a place where Digimon are born and reborn. Since Digimon are digital, when they die, their data is just broken down and they're reborn again. At this huh? point, Patamon is the only Digimon in the group who hasn't Digivolved. But it comes close. Patamon gets in a hard situation, and the show does some goddamn edging with teasing Patamon's evolution. He's Digivolving! Oh. But nothing. As everyone gets back together, Devimon infects Leomon, this handsome muscular rugged the digivice shines getting rid of the black gears inside of leomon and leomon's like thanks afterwards they have a little powwow and leomon explains that the kids are the digi destined those who were chosen to protect the digital world the digivice is a connection between the kids and the digimon that help them to digivolve the kids decide that defeating devimon may help them get home but he just kicks the shit out of them and finally release Okay, well that's uh <laughs> quite a change. Patamon digivolves into Angemon. I want to take him home with me. Oh. Trust me. So do I. Angemon fights Devimon. Devimon is destroyed, but then Angemon dies and reverts into a digi egg. As the show goes on, you can feel the actors and the writers gain appreciation for it. In the beginning, the characters poke fun at its ridiculousness and even directly reference the limited animation. <laughs> Whoa, time's standing still here. The mm. character they have the most fun with is Togemon, who's just a cactus with boxing gloves. You're going down, okay. big boy! I, I can feel them laughing behind the recording booth. <laughs> the kids are always making digi puns, and Izzy even says prodigious, which is just close enough to count. There's digi vice, digi destined, digi world, digi evolved, but nothing is as bad as the digi rap. Did you see? Oh. Okay. Even though the stupid jokes never stop, as the show continues to go on, the writing and the acting inevitably gets better. The first arc spends its 13 episodes building a solid foundation of character and setting. You get to know these characters and how they interact with every other person within the group, and that's because of how strongly they're written. You could drop any of these characters into any situation and it would be entertaining. Izzy, I know how to get it to boot up. You just gotta give it a couple of subtle hey, adjustments. Wait, are your brain cells malfunctioning? After defeating Devimon, the Digi Destined are contacted by an old man named Jedi. He says that the next step in their journey is for them to search for tags and crests to help their Digimon reach the next level. The kids leave File Island and head for the continent File of Sir, Island. a new location. Digimon is a show that's able to tell a complete story without blending episodes together. Each episode is a distinct chapter. Variation episode to episode is found within the characters featured and the action. You have giant monster versus giant monster, but in moments like this where Agumon is smaller, it's only through creative thinking that they're able to win the fight. Devimon was literally Satan. So to contrast his darkness, the next villain they face is Edamon. <laughs> I see. <laughs> A monkey who does an Elvis impression. <laughs> Why not? That. I wonder what they're doing all the way over um, there. You got any idea? This may seem out of place, but he's not the only character on the show whose voice is just an impression. Where's my fried banana sandwich? Um, you also got Peter Lorre. Will, Will, Will. Huh? You weren't planning on running away now, were you? That would make me very angry. And Rodney Dangerfield. I'll take you there myself. It's not every day your lunch saves your life. That's a story of my life. No respect. That'll get no respect at all. Edamon is more of an obstacle villain. As the kids search for the tags and crests, he's always on their trail, and the kids are always on edge because he can track them through his dark network. Ty is the first one to find his crest, and under the pressure, he gets this inflated idea of importance. This comes to a climax when Agumon starts losing a fight. Ty throws himself into danger and forces Agumon to digivolve. This corrupts the digivice, turning Agumon into a giant 
fucking evil spooky <laughs> okay. Digimon. Who goes on a rampage. When he reverts back to his smaller form, Tai apologizes to Agumon and promises to never do that again. Over the next few episodes, the rest of the gang find their crests, and they're contacted by a Digimon trapped in Edamon's lair. Their rescue mission goes wrong, and Sora is captured. Izzy accidentally convinces Tai that the digital world is only a simulation, so Tai keeps making stupidly dangerous decisions. Eventually, Tai learns that there are real consequences that come with being harmed in the digital world. Where most of the danger in the show has involved giant monsters, the moment where Tai has to be courageous is really intimate. Izzy was able to determine a weak point in the infrastructure of an electric fence, and Tai has to force himself to trust Izzy in order to save Sora. Once he builds up the courage, his crest starts to glow. Tai saves Sora, and the squad is confronted by Edamon. With his crest glowing and using the most advanced high-tech animation software in the biz, Agumon yeah, did yeah, looks great. ultimate form. Edamon is defeated, but the battle creates this wormhole that Tai ends up getting sucked into. Tai! What happened to them? At this point, you've probably started to notice the limited animation. Each of the Digimon has a special attack that recycles the same animation every time they use it. <sighs> certain scenes are just repeated animation over and over again. Matt, where are you going? Not to mention the Digivolution sequences repeat in every episode. Sometimes movement sure that never gets old. image or two repeating frames. Animation errors occur throughout the entire series, and sometimes character models will be off throughout oh. the entire episode. Doing, you doing all right? <laughs> Although less common, dumb yeah. errors occur too, like the wrong voice coming out of the wrong character. Hey, check it out! You can see right through this wall. And this mysterious child's voice that doesn't belong to any of the characters. Be uh -oh, over here. Huh? Oh. Well, so much. Whose voice is this? <laughs> After the Edamon fight, Ty finds himself back in the real world alone on the same day that he left. Tai goes home, and for some reason, his sister Kari recognizes Agumon. This episode was actually directed by Mamoru Hasoda, whose name I butchered, and who also directed the first two Digimon films. He's also directed such anime films as The Girl Who Leapt Through Time and The Boy and the Beast, the latter of which nearly got him an Oscar nomination. In this episode, the colors are subdued and the tone is shifted. Although Tai is home, the change in style lets the audience know that something is wrong. Eventually, a Digimon attacks the city, Agumon fights it, and Tai gets sent back to the digital world. After all this time of trying to get home, Tai has to say goodbye to Kari so he can go back and find his friends. Please be careful. This episode's slow and somber tone serves as both a breath of fresh air and a transition into what's next. It's Fox Kids Digibloop That, where we show you how we make April fools of ourselves. Hey, listen, Kombucha. Oh. oh boy. Cut. Take 21. Okay. Hey, listen, now Kombucha. bloopers. I can do this. Cut. Take 45. Hey, listen, Kabusha. Kabu. Kabu Baba Daba. Ugh. Can we just call him Bob? Mm -hmm. Ulamon, Kramon, and now commercial. Bro! The Digimon adventure continues with Digimon action figures, trading cards too. Digimon, each sold separately from Bandai. When Ty gets back, everyone has split up to look for him. Ty spends time getting the band back together, but before they're all together, we get some isolated stories where both Matt and Izzy's crests activate. Where each of the Digimon were able to digivolve the first time in order to protect their partners, it is up to their partners to help them do it a second time. Each of the crests have a quality that the kids best represent. Courage, friendship, love, knowledge, sincerity, hope, and reliability. Once they uphold these values so. under pressure, the crest activates. But it's not always easy for them. They have to earn it. Part of the kind reason of like why so many of the kids have stayed of harmony separated thing. without Tai is because of Demi Devimon, who's been working for this mysterious evil Digimon. Sora has been following him trying to protect the group, but she's keeping her distance. She eventually comes back around and explains that she believes her crest of love will never glow. Her and her mom have issues, and her mom doesn't let her pursue her own interests and forces her to work inside their family's flower shop. Finally, the shadowed villain reveals himself to be Myotismon, the most rad, bad, rock-horror, flamboyantly awesome vampire Digimon. He's got bats. 
Uh -huh. won't let Biomon fight, but then she makes a connection between her own overprotectiveness and her relationship with her mother. Her crest of love glows and Biomon digivolves. I'll protect you, Sora! Hey, Digimon, hey, Digimon! What is this song? Instead of using the original Japanese soundtrack, they created their own. The background I, I music see. doesn't add anything to the show, but one track in particular plays whenever the Digimon start winning a fight. Wow. I'm... Uh... This upbeat children's folk song just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah! It's supposed to be a more tense moment. But nothing is as bad as the Digi-Rap. With Digi-Will and Digi-Vice in hand, there's a Digi-Dynamic Force in Digi-Land. When the Digi-Pass and Digi-Present collide, time to digi The kids discover that Myotismon's plan is to open a gate into the real world. So Agumon and Palmon infiltrate Myotismon's army to distract them. And they learn that he really likes soda. Okay. I love that soda. Um. It worked. Soda. As they're about to follow Myotismon, they're stopped by Gatomon, his prime henchman. Which is kind of a good thing that they were stopped, because I don't think everyone would have made it through the gate. Finally, after all this time, Jedi invites the group over to his place for a talk. He explains to them that Myotismon's goal is to find a missing 8th Digidestin, and everyone's oh. like... Huh? In order to open the gate again, a puzzle needs to be solved. At this point, everyone looks to Tai and officially recognizes him as the leader, because he brought everyone back together. Tai trusts Izzy to solve the puzzle, and the kids find themselves back at camp on the same day they left. Because of the snowstorm, everyone is getting sent home. The kids get dropped off in a neighborhood being attacked by a Digimon, and they realize that at some point, they all lived here at the same time. They start getting flashbacks to memories of I a Digimon see. fight that happened four years ago that they all witnessed. It's for this reason that they were chosen to be the Digidestined. Before Digimon Adventure aired in Japan, Digimon Adventure, a, a, a short film, aired at a Japanese film festival. It hmm. almost served as a pilot to the series and recounts the story of that night. It's pretty awesome. Seeing these characters animated really well rocks and giant fucking monsters, giant fucking parrot. Mon. Except the English dub starts with <gasps> the Digi Rep. Wow, wow. Many Japanese shows will censor themselves for American audiences by making no reference to Japan, but here they're open about it. Sorry, but you're too late. I'll miss you in Japan. Not only that, but a lot of the more touchy issues are addressed directly divorce, adoption, neglect. The reason why a lot of the kids moved out of Heightened View Terrace is because that fight was mistaken for a terrorist attack. Oh. It was right after the terrorist bombing. This is where it happened. Right on this footbridge. Though this episode did air before 9-11, so I imagine if it aired afterwards, they would have been a little less open about that. <laughs> Probably. Later, there's a reference to the number of the beast from the Bible. What's the hour of the beast? Six, six, six. That's so metal. The only time the show <laughs> censored uncut content is when alcohol is involved, but I'm always thankful for that because it ends up being so hilarious. Come on, show me! All right, it's a bottle of green chili sauce. It's great on tacos. What are you doing eating on the job when there's work to be done? Green chili sauce. Once the yeah. show gets into the real world, things start getting really good. Of course, there are inevitable consequences of bringing giant monsters into the real world. People are going to start realizing something's up. Oh, look, honey, how cute. A wild elephant on the rampage. Um, you're filming a movie or something. Wow. I'm kind of surprised the they work in the real world already established, if they're digital. Myotismon arc but. turns everything upside down and raises the stakes because now the kids' parents are in danger I'm sure it makes sense and they have to try to hide the their show. Digimon from everybody. Wow. Although there is still a threat, the show isn't afraid to take some quiet moments and let the kids rest and see their family again. We spend the most time with Izzy's parents. They're so proud of him, but he's such a recluse, so they try to give him his own space. Izzy and his family have some of the most heartwarming moments in the show. It's not often a kid's show will make the parents real characters, and even less so when they have flaws of their own. Matt's dad, stop smoking. Wow. Myotismon sends out all of his henchmen to track down the eighth child. So it's a race between the kids and Myotismon. The audience is told that Kari, Tai's sister, is the eighth child, but her goddamn real-life cat loses the digivice, so none of the kids know. But the audience knows. That's dramatic <laughs> irony. Meanwhile, so Myotismon is a vampire, but he's also a Digimon, so 
you don't really think about vampire rules still applying to him. Because of that, I totally wasn't expecting this scene. Human blood always tastes better with a dash of fear in it. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh. It happens once, it's briefly mentioned again, but then nothing. Okay. One of the highlight episodes in this arc is out on the town. TK and Matt come across Pumpkinmon and Gatsumon, two of Myotismon's Pumpkinmon. All they want to do is have fun, but TK and Matt just try to keep them out of trouble. You guys need to change your attitude. You need to change your clothes! <laughs> <laughs> this looks as you're not afraid to think big. Eventually, Myotismon gets pissed that they're not doing their job, and it all climaxes when they end up sacrificing themselves in order to save Matt and TK. I wish this was the moment where Matt's crest of friendship activated for the first time, but instead, Angemon finally comes back, so that's neat. Some of the show's experience is actually lost through binging. It takes them about 28 episodes to get back home. When you're waiting for new episodes week by week to see this happen, it's long, and it's a huge relief to see them finally reunite with their family. But when you can watch all those episodes back to back, it doesn't seem that long. The return of Angemon is supposed to be this big thing, but it doesn't translate. It felt so much longer when I had to catch these episodes on TV day by day. And I can imagine those who watched it weekly got the feeling even more. While searching for the eighth child, Gatamon gets recognized as a Digimon by Kari. Kari invites Gatamon into the house, and then there's this mixture of tension and awkwardness as Gatamon oh. tries to convince herself to kill Kari. Hi! Aww. <laughs> but when she can't, Gatomon goes to talk to her best bud, Wizardmon. Wizardmon, Wizardmon. recognizes that Gatomon isn't as evil as she tries to be. Wizardmon recounts a story that Thing Gatomon doesn't look told evil. years ago about how she waited for somebody her whole life, but eventually found Myotismon. Wizardmon is able to find the missing Digivice, and he suggests that maybe the person Gatomon was waiting for was Kari. They drop by to confirm their suspicions. I've been searching forever and ever for you. Gatomon and Wizardmon try to steal Kari's tag and crest from Myotismon. She gets caught and Myotismon uses her to discover who the eighth child is. Myotismon's minions gather all of the people in Tokyo, bringing the kids to him and trapping everyone else in the convention center. Once Kari sees the destruction in the city, she turns herself into Myotismon. The whole squad comes to her rescue. Myotismon attacks Kari, but... Oh. Well, Wizardmon gives Kari the crest. It shines and. Gatamon, two. Oh. <laughs> um. Oh. All of the Digimon give Angel Woman. Yeah. Angel Wu. Their I power, see. and she seemingly defeats Myotismon. Gatomon is the only Digimon who really has a story arc. We meet her, learn how she was found and mistreated by Myotismon, and how she was able to rise above it all and become stronger than him. Through peace and love and all that shit. Also arrows. For mm -hmm. some reason, even after he's defeated, Myotismon's lair of fog still hasn't left the city. And that's because he's not dead yet. Like every other bad guy so far, Myotismon is defeated when two Digimon reach a new level. This time, Agumon and Gabumon. But the ending isn't what makes this arc great. Seeing all of the kids grow to help their Digimon to Digivolve, the issues with their families, and the stakes being raised is what makes this arc great. We did it, Time! We did it! Yeah. Dang! Wasn't that cool, man? Great job, Sunomon! <laughs> Immediately after Myotismon's defeat, a hole in the sky opens up, and Digimon start coming into the real world. Years have passed in the digital world, and clearly, something's wrong. We have to go back! Once everyone is finally reunited with their families, they have to say goodbye to save both worlds. And this time, Kari comes along. Mm -hmm. Since they've been gone, a group called the Dark Masters have taken over. A lot of their friends are dead, and because the primary village has been infected, no Digimon can be reborn until they're defeated. In one episode, we meet all four Dark Masters. The real tension comes from amongst the group and the fact that a lot of their friends have died for their cause. Some of the tension works. The first mini arc is against Metal Seedramon and they're ill-equipped to fight him. So it's played like a chase movie. Then there's the next mini arc. Kari gets sick and Tai needs to find her medicine inside a city while also being hunted down by Machine Dramon, who's the most generically evil villain ever. Send oh. units to all 12 locations. Yeah. Blow them up. 
All of this tension to help Kari results in Tai punching Izzy when some minor thing goes wrong, but a lot of the tension seems forced, like when Matt recognizes that TK doesn't really need him to protect him anymore. This results in him challenging Tai and eventually leaving the group. This fractures the group until the final battle. There are standout moments in this arc, but they're all individual moments. A lot of familiar faces help to return with the fight, and some don't make it. Leomon, for instance, comes back as a mega-level Digimon, but so does Edamon. Well, I see we've been taking our vitamins, but it's time to put the cat <laughs> out of the garbage. Why do I love him so much? <laughs> Leomon dies in the fight, which is sad, but if you're familiar with the rest of the Digimon series, it's kind of funny. Because literally, every time he shows up, he dies. One of my favorite moments, not only in this arc, but in the entire series, is between Puppetmon and TK. Puppetmon is the childish member of the Dark Masters, and he ends up kidnapping TK as a playmate. The interaction between these two is great because TK just ends up being the more mature person in the room. You just play the same game over and over again. Boring! Because Agumon and Gabumon are able to reach this new level, for a majority of the arc, all of the other Digimon and the kids are cast aside. But in the final fight, everyone has a moment, and a lot of the characters that they've met throughout the series come back to help. It's a fun, generic final battle that helps add a nice cap to their time spent in the digital world. The final arc isn't bad, but it's weak when compared to what came before it. The Dark Masters just weren't as developed as Myotismon, and most of the cast was taken out of the spotlight. But although I don't like how they got there, having most of the tension come from amongst the group really works. After the fighting is over, the last moments of the show are able to bring together a feeling of joy, somberness, and accomplishment. The kids are forced to say goodbye to their Digimon, and even though they aren't sure if they will ever see each other again, they hold on to the hope that one day they might. This isn't the end of their adventures together, just another chapter. I love Digimon. I've rewatched it a few times, and every time I do, I am surprised with how well it holds up. Sure, it has its fault, and the English dub can be annoying sometimes, but for the most part, I prefer the English dub. When it's just the kids traveling around, the stupid humor is charming, but it can get in the way sometimes. It's unfortunate that only one of the Digimon follow-up series is worth watching, because Digimon is now a relic of the time when it aired. There was a movie, but that's a discussion for another time. Between a much more popular competing series and a limited animation budget, the team behind Digimon Adventure had to create the best show they could with limited resources. And they compensated not with giant action scenes, but by telling a heartwarming story about kids who got thrown into a situation and how they learned to deal with it by making the best of it. Okay, well there we go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sure that video probably has more impact if you are a fan of Digimon and remember all this stuff. But to me, uh, I mean, it was still interesting to just see what the series was like. I mean, this is something I chose never to get into. Uh, I mean, it does look like it was probably pretty good. Uh, I mean, yeah, the animation looks kind of questionable but uh and that dub i don't know but uh i mean i can get why people would like this and uh definitely yeah looks like a fairly cool thing so so yeah i uh i don't know not really sure what to say it was uh i think he did a good job kind of explaining it and uh going through it all so uh yeah, pretty good review. Uh, I think I... <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to say. This was, uh, this was fine. This was good. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. Let me know if you did. And see you in the next one.